Hello and welcome. My name is Kadya, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Odin Sphere Leif Thrasir demo and giving some just overall review of the updates that have been made to the classic game. Um, we're going to play through all of the five characters in sequence from left to right and just get a feel for the changes that have been made to combat and the quality of life changes for growing fruits and such. Uh, I won't repeat the fruit growing for every character, um, but I'll go into the moves and I'll try and uh, try and show off some of the combos and special moves that have been made available for this new updated version of the game. Um, one thing you'll probably notice right off the bat is that the graphics, if you are familiar with the original, look absolutely fantastic. The animations, everything runs uh, amazingly at 60 frames per second. Um, it's just, it's fantastic. The smoothness of every, every pixel, every frame, every leaf on the trees, the blades of grass, the foliage, the birds, everything is just amazing. Um, but in this demo, uh, all characters start at level 8 and have a predetermined set of special skills. Two of them being physical and two of them being magical. Uh, in the main game, you'll actually be able to customize the ones that you learn as well as leveling up your stats through uh, the menus and systems. So, for the purposes of controls, basically X is jump you can do double jumps, some characters like Gwendolyn, if you hold it after the second jump, you can float, and hold them up, makes her kind of glide up a little bit, so she's got limited flight capabilities. Uh, holding square, it brings up your guard, and then from that, uh, I don't know, I, I want to say that this is probably a skill that you earn, or you unlock rather, is that uh, you can do these kind of dash attacks out of your guard. And in the case of the demo, you can chain them up to three times, which is really neat. Uh, but square is your basic attacks. You've got up, forward, uh, there's crouching attacks. Some of these are chargeable. Again, I don't know if that's a thing that's unlocked. I'm going to guess that anything that's not basic is going to be unlocked through the skills or the level up system in some way. Uh, triangle brings up our menu. Here we have uh, our potions, equipment, mandragoras, I don't know anything about how those work, uh, and seeds which are used to plant new fruit to grow to eat and gain HP and uh, food XP. So here we have some combat. These uh, grizzly bears, cute little well, I say cute, but they actually look like they want to murder me, so uh, I'm not going to give them the chance. I'm just going to take them out with some basic combos. Uh, juggling is really fun in this game. Uh, you can actually juggle almost indefinitely. I'm going to use a skill here. I'm going to use a rapid thrust, I think it's called. Uh, needle strike. Uh, and you can. This is the neat thing. There's... Uh, technically three ways to activate skills. You can press L1 to bring up the skills menu, and you can manually select the skill. It'll automatically perform a jump if it's an aerial move only, uh, and it will activate it upon uh, activating the skill. So you have POW, which in the upper left you have the HUD, the POW meter. Uh, so it's going to take 30% of the POW meter for high thrust, and it would take crystals for magic. Now crystals, I'll show you in a second, you earn one or two, um, maybe even more based on the enemy that you kill. Um, and see one of those purple things? Those are those are actually Phosons. And Phosons are, um, Phosons are kind of like a life force energy thing. Now every one of those that you pick up, you get a recharge to your magic crystals and you get a Phozon into your inventory. Now Phozons are shown in the upper right, that little pink crystal with the seven. 
that's the number of phosons I have, and I'm going to show in a little bit what those are used for and how to use them. So this is the map. You can bring this up by pressing R3 and kind of just shows you what's going on, where you're headed. Um, you know, like the chests, it's, you know, there's a chest there, the circles with the combat is just that, combat. The item above any of the combat areas shows you what you'll get out of the chest. Uh, I believe automatically all other rewards are based on your battle score. As you saw from this battle, I did manage an S rank. Um, all the battles in this demo are pretty easy. Um, overall, I feel like at level 8, probably not going to have all of the abilities. Um, oops. And yeah, bringing up the map doesn't pause the game in any way. You can still run around. Uh, and of course, you've got the uniquely detailed mini map. Uh, at the top of the screen and the map and the bottom screen, uh, bottom of the screen as well. So we're gonna go ahead and move on here and uh, fight these guys. It's telling us that we can use a magic potion. So to do that, we can open our bag menu, as it says, with triangle, and then select the item that we want to use. It gives you a snippet of how it, what it does at the bottom of the screen. So we're gonna go ahead and use it, and it sends out a tornado that does a whole bunch of damage, it moves in a line. Um, if I remember correctly, in the original version of the game, and I did play it a bit, in the original version of the game, you could actually get hurt by your own magic potions, which made using them a lot harder than it sh should be, because, I mean, I suppose realism, you throw out a giant tornado like that, you would expect not to be able to stand in it safely, but as one of the quality of life changes they made to this version of the game, uh, I personally like it. I, I think it adds a little bit more strategy to how you how you manage through each combat, um, not having to worry about well, if I use that from where I'm standing now, I might kill myself. It's a little bit of a catch-22. So there in that chest, I got a muggle, and here I'll take the opportunity to explain how food works. Let's get a little bit of a clearer view here, if we can. The front foliage is covering up a little bit. Maybe over here? Yeah. Alright, so in the, if we open up the menu... Oh, well, that's the status screen. I'll show you that real quick. So this will actually show you the XP, HP, Strength, Dex, Attack, uh, and so on. Stats that you actually can up, I believe, in the normal game through levels, your money, where you are in the game, uh, and your playtime, of course. Um, now we can actually go into the Equipment screen, which shows us here the three pieces of equipment that you have and their effects. So the Power Stone gives us 16 defense and a whole bunch of other stuff. Um, oh, sorry. So 16 defense and then it gives us the recovery rate to our Power Gauge and 5 strength. The Lux Stone increases drop rate and the Detox Charm uh, increases the speed at which we get rid of poison. So, standard stuff. Uh, I Obviously, I'm guessing that some of this is going to be hard to acquire in the regular game. Um, and certainly not going to have it near, near the start. Probably well well after level 8. So, um, right, food. So, opening the menu, we have two things we can do. We can eat or we can eat in bulk when it comes to food. This is a quality of life change that was made to uh, this version of the game. Now, see how it says Muggle 2 of 2? Now, this means that this muggle has two out of two uses. Uh, items can have multiple uses. I don't believe healing tonics do. I believe there are other potions that do. But, basically, if I eat it, I'll eat half of it. And in this case, I recover some HP. As it says, recovers 50 HP. It increases my maximum HP by two and gives me 70 XP. Finishing it will leave a muggle seed. So my max HP goes up by 2, and then there's a Muggle Seed. Now I pick this up, and now if I go over to Seeds, I can plant it. And it'll tell you exactly what it does, what the fruit does, and also how to grow the fruit and what it does. So it ripens with 9 Phosons. Remember in the upper right, we have 15 at the moment. So I'm going to plant this seed, and then we need to feed it Phosons. So you can do this two ways. You can beat up enemies and have it automatically absorb the phosons. Um, 
Or the easier way is to gate phosons and then release them manually by holding R1 in square, as it shows on screen. The plant will absorb the required number of phosons and the remaining ones will float around for you to re-pick up. So there's no worry about releasing too many phosons while holding R1 square. So now the fruit's there. We can harvest it. We can pick up the muggle. It's back in our inventory. And the only thing it cost us to regrow the fruit was time and phosons. So it's a really neat way to basically manage your healing and your inventory as well as food and obviously increasing your maximum HP is always a good idea. So we're going to move on with combat here. I'm going to try and pull off some more cool combos. The old dash attack and a down charge attack. And some magic, I guess. Show off the magic. It's a pretty neat spell she has there. Um, and each character has unique uh, basic combos, skills, and magic uh, available to them. I don't think that a lot of the magic... Some of the magic might be uh, transferable between characters, but I don't know how exactly that works. Maybe something you could do uh, down the road. But I believe probably not, as each character... As with most Vanillaware games, each character has a very unique feel to their aesthetics and fighting style, as well as their uh, lore. So as you see here, completion bonus, completion reward, was of course the reward that was listed above this room on the map. And then we have an A rank bonus of 6 uh, Rogman Silver. So. Pop the chest, and we get the healing tonic and the Ragnar Silver. And moving forward. So this is, I believe, a new addition, or at least I don't remember too many of them. These rooms were a little more open platform kind of rooms. A um, little more of an explorable thing than just a combat room. Some of them will have treasure, some of them will have traps, other ones will have encounters. For example, if I come over here and I break these eggs, I'll summon these little raptor dudes, and I can I can fight them, and I can get some phosons, um, and some money, of course. You can always uh, hold R1 as well to manually absorb uh, phosons that are nearby, instead of having to actually pick them up manually by uh, running over them. So as you can see on the map on the upper, it's uh, it's pretty useful for showing you exactly where things are. Enemies, items, spells, and whatnot. It's all very active and uh, relatively useful, especially when fighting large groups of enemies. Knowing what's behind you uh, or slightly off, off screen is uh, extremely useful in the later stages of the game. That's pretty hard to hit with, actually. And see there, what I actually did was the third method of activating a skill, which is uh, if I can set shortcut, is you can actually set a couple of uh, almost fighting style, fighting game style special moves. Um, here we have a fireball motion, a down up, and then a uh, half circle motion. Um, so you could set this one for a move that you maybe didn't want to use all the time. And you could set this to a spammable one. You've got the circle, up circle, down circle, and forward, or side circle, I guess, as well. So those are really simple ways to pull off your, your special moves. And the wonderful thing, I'll demonstrate it real here, just in case uh, no one's noticed yet, is how easy it is to spam these and how quickly your POW gauge recovers. So using those in your uh, bread and butter combos is very important uh, to whittle down enemies quickly. A quick guard there, saved me some, some damage. Couldn't get out of that one though, I was mid animation. So as you can see, the combat is very fluid and very flexible. Uh, you know, using my POW meter there, I was able to pick him up and uh, create a combo. 
That, I believe, was a critical? Um, or it kind of just slowed the game down for a second there. I believe that is a critical attack. It happens when you're doing uh, regular combos. I'm gonna guess that the luck stat is uh, something that would increase that. But there we go, the mini boss falls. Um, all adds in this fight, at least, uh, die when you defeat the mini boss. So we get our completion rewards and our S rank rewards. Whole bunch of stuff. Uh, grapes do not. Uh, they leave the stem, uh, which you can either throw at enemies or, I believe, sell for one gold. Uh, I think you can also use them for alchemy. Um, could be wrong on that, but... Basically, there's a use for everything in the game, and it's, it's really nice that even the smallest little details are taken care of. You know, you wouldn't... For a game that worries about the food, you know, it's really nice to see, oh hey, we're not just gonna have you throw this away for no reason. I mean, you could, you could choose to, but the fact that you can actually choose to pick it up and just sell it later is kind of a nice touch. It adds a little bit of immersion, I guess. So we have a merchant here, and I'll show you really quick. Uh, a couple things before we move on to the boss and finish this tutorial slash uh, Gwendolyn run. I have poison if you want. Unfortunately, I do not have a blade to cope with it. Okay, so it shows us right here our gold, our bag space, and our item box. Item box uh, works like a storage box, I'm pretty sure, so you can access items from here, you can store items here. Uh, and I believe it can be accessed at any merchant, which is really nice. So here we're just going to go ahead and look at what he has to sell. On the right side it shows us how many we have in our bag, and how many we have in our item box, uh, what it costs, and you can do bulk buys. For example, if I wanted to buy uh, multiple healing tonics and a cyclone, I could do that. Uh, it gives you your total at the bottom. We're just going to go ahead and buy a uh, overload because we're going to kill the boss real, real quick uh, once he starts ticking us off. So, um, real quick as well, a quality of life change that was made is to eat and plant in bulk. Uh, in the original game, you kind of had to just go through it manually like we did the first time, but here we can eat two muggles automatically. It kind of just queues up the food and then eats it and drops the seeds on the ground. Then you can pick the seeds up and then plant them in bulk. So what this does is it plants them right next to each other. It gives us a total on the on the left there, phosons needed for all of the seeds we're going to plant. And we're just going to go ahead and let the phosons out. Make sure that we gave them enough there. Yep, there we go. And so it saves us a lot of time in growing food and uh, maintaining our food consumption rate for XP and such. Uh, it's a really nice change that in the long run I think is going to make the game a lot more enjoyable. Uh, and here we have the boss fight for this demo. It is the uh, dragon. I don't remember what it's actually called. I think it's like the desert dragon or something. But We're going to go ahead and whoop his butt. Uh, an explanation of the boss health system, real quick, is that uh, the bar at the bottom is the current bar. When you take that out, you take a chunk off of their main bar, which is the smaller bar. Uh, another thing I forgot to mention for combat purposes is the dodge mechanic. Uh, this is done by tapping R1. You can also do air dodges, and you can chain them a few times, uh, two or three I believe, depending on the character. Oh, he ate me. It's gonna do a little bit of damage and then knock me down. Um, so dodging is very useful as it allows you to move through certain enemies. Um, the best thing you can do to get through larger enemies like this is to guard and use the dash attack. Oh, he ate us again. We must not taste good, he likes to throw us up. 
So, and yeah, you can chain pretty much anything. Like, I can chain aerial attacks into a dodge, into the side aerial. Um, you also, of course, have aerial downs. Um, one that only has a neat mechanic where journeying her double jump or glide, uh, if you press square, I think it's square and X at the same time, you do that little aerial dive attack there. I'm trying to get it. Yeah, you have to be in her glide and then press square. So as you can see, and this is just Gwendolyn, but each character has a surprising number of fun different options to uh, utilize throughout combats. It gives you a lot of flexibility and you're not just left there mashing the square button or mashing that uh, guard button. You know, you kind of have to pay attention to what you're doing a little bit. And I'm taking a lot of damage from this guy, so I'm going to go ahead and open up my inventory. I'm going to pop a healing tonic. I'm going to try and catch up to him. He turns around. We're going to go ahead and drop the potion. Uh, we're going to use a blaze, as it says to. I can use blaze. That's not actually hitting him because I put it behind him. Oh, now it is. Nudging him into it a little bit. Um, he's a dragon, so he probably doesn't like magic too much. I'm going to go ahead and finish him off with this. And the demo ends immediately uh, upon finishing the dragon. Um, it doesn't even give you an items thing because you, you no longer need it. But... Yep, that was the demo run with Gwendolyn, and uh, yeah, that one was a little bit more tutorial heavy. I just wanted to give people who don't know uh, anything about the game a quick course in how combat and uh, item management is done. The next ones are just going to be more about the character combos and... Uh, skills.